All right, so today we're gonna to dive into Tesla and full self-driving and the new beta that seems to be very close to coming to reality today. And we thought, hey, who better to have back here on TechPath? And that's Mr. Warren Redlick, who is of course one of the, I think one of the, the number one Tesla analyst out there, especially when it comes to YouTube. But of course, we wanna welcome back to the show here. My name is Paul Barron. And TechPath of course dives into all things AI, EV, robo, you look at cryptocurrency, this is the channel for you. I want to jump over to Warren now. Hey, Warren. Hello, nice how are you? you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm having a great time. Lots of fun. <laughs> I just released a new video today with Tesla stock analysis for 2021 and 2022. So just a couple there, hours ago. So that's that's There getting, you go. That's hitting. You're, you're in the midst of the, the study. Uh, I like the fact that we've got a lot of activity going on now with Tesla a lot of movement in the space. Let's jump into the uh, FSD uh, component, obviously with, with the new version that Elon has been working on, literally, I think, uh, burning the midnight oil on trying to get this thing out. Tell me what you know about where it is today. Uh, what we apparently know, if Elon is not <laughs> messing with us, is FSD version nine beta will be released on Saturday. Um, that so that is Saturday a tweet release. from last night, I believe. Holmar's yep. catalog was harassing him, and he finally said it's coming Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I was joking about this that uh, if you're dealing with a dementia patient, there's this concept <laughs> called therapeutic lying that you just give them an answer that satisfies them because it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. They're not going to remember five minutes later anyway. So, for example, if they ask you, when am I going to get my, my, you know, where's my watch? Oh, I sent it to be repaired. When am I going to get it back? Probably two weeks, you know, which is, <laughs> and I feel like that's how Elon is treating us. Elon has just decided we're dementia patients and he could just tell us whatever to get us satisfied. You know, it'll, it'll last a few days and then we'll start bogging him again. Yeah. So he's sure. just, he's just giving us therapy by telling us dates and times. So what at some point we'll actually get it delivered. <laughs> Yes, for sure. What are your thoughts? I mean, when you look at where Elon is in terms of the development of FSD, there's been you know numerous pushbacks on it uh, in terms of just delays, et cetera. Why do you think there has been any kind of challenge uh, from Tesla in being able to roll this, this version out? I think that uh, they basically had to rebuild the whole thing. And then if you watch Andre Karpathy's recent talk, it sounds like it takes two weeks that's why I think this is where the two weeks comes from. It mm -hmm. takes two weeks for them to iterate. So they think they're close, should just be one more iteration. They do the iteration and oh, it's not quite there yet. Right. Should just be one more iteration. They do one more iteration. Oh, oh, we were really close, but it's not quite there yet. And it's just, I, I know Karpathy kind of said they've done seven iterations uh, and, and, the, yeah. and, and it was over a four month period or something like that, which works out to be pretty close to two weeks. So that's my theory about the origin of the probably two weeks is it's just one more iteration. And it's just uh, James Dauma, who has done a lot of interviews with uh, Dave Lee and he's, he came on my channel once. He basically says you get really close and you think you're close, but you never know how close you are. That's just you know, until you're there. You think you're there and then there's like one more thing and there's one more thing and there's one more problem and then you just have to iterate again and the iterations take two to three weeks and yeah. that's it. Yeah, I, and I, I know the uh, the Robot Bain's, uh, Brains podcast that you're referring to with Andre um, and he did. I mean, we did a video on this on the whole evolution of where FSD was going, why it was taking a little bit longer why we're seeing this slowdown in, in, in terms of rollout. Do you think this has anything to do with uh, their switch from LiDAR and moving to Tesla Vision that has recalibrated how they're approaching FSD? What are your thoughts on that? No, um, first of all, I'm talking about Andre Karpathy's more recent talk on, I think it's CDPR. Andre Karpathy had a more recent talk where he was, okay. where he laid out that four months, you know, seven iterations, new supercomputer, uh, gotcha. you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, no, I think that the, first of all, LiDAR has been, LiDAR has not been part of the system. It's eliminating radar. I think eliminating radar was part of the plan. It was just, they were already ignoring the radar in, in, in a lot of their models. And it was just that they stopped putting radar in the new Model 3s and Model Ys. That's the change. Mm -hmm. It's not that... 
that you you can put radar in the vehicle and still not use it. So I think from a manufacturing standpoint, it just started to make sense to not bother putting radar in. And once this is validated, then they stop putting radar in any car. So right now, my Model Y has it, uh, has radar in it. I'm assuming it's it's being utilized in the current software that is applied. I would not assume or, that. So you think that in a software update, they've disabled radar to active vehicles? It's not a question of able, enabling or disabling radar. The, the problem is that this is sort of a, I, I'm not an engineer, but this is sort of an engineering concept. There's something called signal to noise ratio. Um, if you're looking at, a, if you're listening to it, there are certain things that are really, really clear signals and certain things that are noisy signals. You're listening to the radio and you're turning the dial and you hear, that's, that's just all noise. You get close to the radio station being right on and the noise declines and you get more of the signal. When you nail it, all you're hearing is the signal, right? And you lose the noise. So cameras are a low noise source of information for the system to use and radar is a noisy source. There's, you never get to that point where you're only getting signal on radar. Yeah. Radar is just a, a very noisy signal. And so yeah. the, the, Compu the computation required to resolve the radar with the vision isn't worth doing if the vision is good enough and the vision is good enough. And that's the ultimate. And, and the radar and that noise issue is the radar gives a lot of false signals like, holy shit, we're about to hit something. I'm sorry. Like we're about to hit something when you're not. And then you right. have to balance. Well, the radar says we're about to hit something. The cameras say we're not. Well, let's be cautious and, and hit the brakes hard. When yeah. you didn't need to hit the brakes hard and now you get rear-ended because you broke hard, um, there's a balance there. And it just ends up being that if the vision is good enough, then the radar adds nothing of value. This is why they don't use LIDAR, because the vision got good enough that LIDAR is irrelevant. I, I, so for me, I'm, of course, doing it from a layman standpoint and driving my uh, Tesla on a daily basis. The one thing that has occurred for my driving habits is phantom braking. It's, it's a real thing. I've had it happen to me multiple times. And my assumption is that that is being caused by radar. It's seeing something that either the cameras aren't seeing or something that the uh, computer is interpreting as, as danger. Uh, and is is going into these phantom brake. These things happen at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. And um, I've actually reported this to Tesla mul multiple times as a danger, you know, that right. this is a problem. W what, have you heard anything about that being related to any radar usage? I mean, it's definitely in Karpathy's talk that he goes through this issue of the way mm -hmm. the quality of the radar signal and that I think the term is false positive. That right. the radar essentially generates false positives. The, the idea with the vision system is let's take all these eight cameras and let's piece together a 3D or 4D view of the world. And if we get that good enough, then we get depth perception and we know where the other objects are. And we get um, projections of velocities of all these different objects. And if we're sure. able to generate all of that with vision alone then radar and LIDAR don't add anything of significant value. And we don't have to worry about radar's noisy signal mm -hmm. telling us things that make us think, oh, something's happening. We got to watch out for it. So it's just, and look, you and I drive cars without radar. We don't use LIDAR. We don't use radar. We use two cameras to, and our meat computer to generate the, the human meat computer right? that's in here. We combine basically these two signals and, and the machinery inside our brain to piece together sort of a 3D view of the world. It's not exactly how we do it, but that's roughly how we do it. And the car is able to use eight cameras and a very, very, very powerful computer or two very, very powerful computers to piece together a better 3D picture of the world than you and I can possibly generate because we don't have eyes in the back of our head. We don't have eyes sticking out the side of our head. Um, and the second challenge is using all the information that's pulling in to do what we do very well, which is, okay, this object is over here. And suppose that object moves behind something. Mm -hmm. You and I are able to process, well, it was going this way before it went behind that object. It's probably going to come out the other side. The car needs to develop that skill. And that's going to be in the new version nine.
that, that a much better ability to see the world in 3D the way, we, you know, you and I see, like in an instant, we just see a picture. But over time, we're sort of processing everything around. And right now, I'm in a t- you and I are probably both in very static environments. There's nothing moving. But if we're driving a car and you see a car coming at a 90 degree angle and then it goes behind a, sh- a hedge, we know it's still coming. Right, right. Yeah. The computer in the car needs to make that same analysis. And my understanding is by going to this 3 or 4D picture of the world, this basically taking the eight cameras, putting that into a 4D picture of the world, and then doing the analysis – makes it a lot better. And we'll see. Yeah, we're we're going to learn yeah, it. We're going to learn it in about a week. Exactly. Karpathy mentioned, this was the video that we were talking, referencing, and it was actually when we did a breakdown of it. Um, Karpathy was talking about this in the next version of obviously where we are now. And that was the whole idea is that at least it convinced me with where they had gone with Tesla Vision. Tesla Vision has advanced enough to where he's got tremendous faith in it, which to me, that's enough. And I think uh, in the scenario of being able to understand, the question we'll think will be when we see the beta roll out, again, the beta will be to the testers before we see it in real life. How long do you think it's gonna be before we actually see it in, you know, us minions out here driving these cars? (laughs) If it's being released on Saturday, then like, I just got a text from Tesla Latino, uh, Raphael from, uh, Uh uh, he's he's in South Florida as me. I just saw him last night. Um, I think he's going to get it on Saturday and, but he's a tester though, right? Yes. I'm probably, I'm hoping to ride in it next week. Um, but you know, I think we will start seeing FSD version nine beta videos sometime next week, but, but you know, you have to recognize the Elon problem that when Elon tells you Saturday, is it really Saturday or is he just giving us therapy? Yeah. (laughs) But uh, again, what I'm we're, talking about is the, the dem- general population. I'm just saying we're the dementia patients in this story. So maybe he's yeah. just giving us therapy. Yeah. Well, that's very possible. But in terms of, of getting this out to the, the general public, anybody that, that wants to either, one, get FSD or two, maybe go into a subscription model, do you think that's going to happen this year? Oh, yeah. No, I think, look, it's, it's roughly two weeks per iteration. So they release it to the FSD beta users, and they're going to get a lot of data from the FSD beta users. Yeah. And they're going to wait two weeks or so to see what kind of data they get from the FSD beta testers. And then they're going to run another round, uh, another iteration of the supercomputer training and see where that takes them. So yeah. well, if you look at how com- long it was, if you look at how long it was bef- when they released the current beta, to where they are now going to the new beta, that was about five and a half months ago. So if they could cut that time in half, you're still probably looking at two and a half months. It, That'd be pretty aggressive in terms of a development. There's a couple things going on here. So it used to be that the FSD beta users were getting regular updates and then they haven't gotten an update since March, which is right. about four months. So yeah. if they resume the regular update schedule, if, if updates start happening again the way they were before, then it's just gonna be a question of how quickly does it improve for the, for the beta testers. And my, my general sense is that they expect it to improve faster than before. So if it took three months for something to happen before, and then there's the, the second question is, when does Dojo go, on, go online? I think Dojo is taking longer, so and Dojo will accelerate the learning. So I think Dojo is the next generation supercomputer that will be training the software to drive better. Uh, I think Dojo is probably gonna be, because they just announced they, they're adding this third supercomputer that's not Dojo, so sounds like Dojo's not ready yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the fact that they're using this three or four D systems bird's eye view system is going to incre- accelerate the training. Dojo is going to accelerate the training further. So when do the regular non beta? Co- I think the beta will expand. So I think you go one or two months and the beta will expand and they'll add another thousand people. Now they're getting more data faster than they expand. And I think also what you're going to say, like if you're you're not a beta tester, right? Nope. So what's going to happen is you're going to get this software in your car but you won't be able to use the beta, but the beta will be watching you drive. It's called sure. shadow mode. And it's gonna be watching you drive in shadow mode and it's gonna be predicting what it thinks you're going to do and it's gonna be predicting what it thinks the objects are gonna do. And it's gonna use the data from a million cars that are all right. gonna have FSD beta version nine in shadow mode. They're, they're all gonna have version nine in shadow mode watching how they drive, watching the roads. And that's gonna feed the iterations, all that data is going to feed the iterations, and that's what's going to make it learn faster. Well, that's so. been happening, though, you know, all along. I mean, that's essentially... Right. But not with version 9. Develop. But not, now version 9 is right. going to be in every car in shadow mode learning. 
That's so you're that's saying the big shadow difference. mode has not been enacted pre version not, nine? Not with version nine. No, no. Shadow mode existed in the previous versions. Right. But you, <laughs> they use shadow mode all the time. But they were using shadow mode with version eight. And version eight is not this three or four D picture of the world. Right. Now you're shifting to this three or four D picture of the world, bird's eye view, whatever you want to call it, and you take that and you put that and that version nine has not been in your car now that version is in every car in shadow mode I, i'm speculating here a little bit yeah you put version nine in shadow mode in every car and it's watching and it's learning from a million cars or a million and a half cars or how many they have on the road now and then they are able to iterate faster and faster and faster so i think that i think can happen for sure the iterations can speed up especially if you've got you know more advanced tech in the in the program layout at that time so for sure and they've yeah, added a third I, supercomputer, and then they're right, going to Right, I anticipate it's going to—it's definitely going to be faster than what we see is had seen in the previous version. Yeah. So I'm I assuming should, version nine is going to be the one they release to the public. Yeah, I should point. say I am not one of those people because I'm not driving a car with FSD yet. Like I don't have a Tesla yet. I have—I'm waiting for my—I'm waiting for Cybertruck. It's like waiting for Godot. Um, but I—I'm <laughs> I, I, not driving it now, so I'm not—I'm not missing it. I'm just missing any Tesla. I, I want to have a Tesla now. It just doesn't make financial sense for me right now. So when my focus as, a, as an investor is if they deliver FSD in 2023, that's fine. I'm looking at a 10, a 10 year time horizon. So it doesn't really matter for a 10 year time horizon, whether they deliver FSD version nine or full robo taxi in 2022 or 2024, if your real focus is 2030, this is all just short term stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I would agree with that because, I mean, I look at it this way. Investors, two things, an investor like me, and I'm invested in Tesla. Uh, I own a Tesla. I'm all in. But the point is, is when I'm around my close friends, neighbors, family, all those types of people who are the influencers that you're going to be affecting to basically get to an adoption event that we need for electric vehicles, we need Tesla to be able to roll these things out incrementally so that we can create that adoption event and create that, you know, hopefully that trickle down or trickle up effect that is, it's more than about stock price for me. This is about replacing right. energy problems and replacing these ICE vehicles that are causing such damage. And if we, and, and I put this on Elon, you've got to speed up on this. It's, you have to, this is, this is, I'm, forget about 22, I agree. three, You've got to be able to give this stuff out to the people because if you don't, you're going to get one, you're going to get people coming in with companies like Lucid or all these other guys that are going to get a shot at it, whether they do it or not. You did not the bring point up Lucid. Is, is you did not did bring up Lucid up with me. <laughs> and we, well, we'll get a chance to talk about Lucid. But the point is, is that you've got all these other companies that are jumping in. I'm saying Tesla has the control here. Why don't they just do it? So, so let me you know? really short. Tesla is not demand constrained. Tesla is supply constrained. They sell every car they make, every car they make, you know, give or take a few thousand based on, you know, the, the, the logistics of getting cars in customers' hands. Sure. Tesla sells every car they make. There is no demand problem. The fact that FSD will increase demand doesn't matter when you can't make enough cars for the demand you have. They're raising prices. They're doing other things because there's so much demand. They just can't make enough cars. And they're trying to get enough batteries to make more cars. And they're trying to spool up their factories so they can make more cars. Right, right. They could make, fi they made 500,000 cars last year. If they make 5 million cars in 2023 with no FSD, they will sell every car. There is no demand problem for Tesla EVs. The, the yeah. value in FSD is not in getting cars sold. I mean, long run, if you never have robo taxis, there is a value in FSD as a feature that will get people sure. to buy cars. The real value as a Tesla shareholder to me is not people buying cars with FSD. It's robo taxis generating revenue and profits from taking rides from whether it's in, pre preferably in a Tesla owned fleet. Yeah. So you mentioned robo taxis here and, and we've studied this uh, to exhaustion here on uh, both from our data and also from our analysis in the industry. One thing, and I think you mentioned this on one of your videos is that you're more concerned about regulatory issues uh, for robo taxi. Do you still feel that we could see regulatory situations occur at some point when robo taxi actually becomes a thing? Yeah, I think it will be jurisdiction by jurisdiction. So, for mm -hmm. example, I think you and I are both in Florida. Yep. So Florida is not going to be a problem. Texas probably will not be a problem. California will probably be OK. California will probably be OK. I think states like Michigan, which are dominated by auto manufacturers, New York right. and Massachusetts, which are just crazy, Europe, 
Um, I think regulators in some jurisdictions, and China will be fine. China will love it. So I think there are jurisdictions that are just backwards where the, the governments are not responsive to the people in the way that they should be. So that will be a regulatory issue there. But once you deliver a working robo-taxi network in, say, Las mm -hmm. Vegas, Nevada, or Miami, Florida, or Los Angeles, and somebody from New York travels to Florida and experiences it and they fly, they, they take an Uber to the airport and to JFK or whatever system they take to JFK airport or LaGuardia. And they fly down to an airport in South Florida and they hop in a robo taxi and they go, why don't we have these in New York? And enough sure. of them do it. And government officials go to a convention in Orlando or Las yeah. Vegas. And they start saying, Hey, why don't we have this? That's what's going to spread it is when enough people, as long as it hits somewhere, it's going to filter down at a certain point. The interests in the states that don't have it will start to say, wait a minute, this isn't about special interests anymore. Right, right now, my commute is 40 minutes, and this will cut my commute to 15 minutes, and I won't have to deal with a car anymore. Let's make this happen in New York. Let's make this happen in Michigan. Let's make this happen in, and that's, that's what's, but it, you have to have it work somewhere first. It doesn't have to be approved everywhere first. Right. And, and of course, the, 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 I guess the hurdles they have to overcome, obviously, is going to be the tax base that a lot of these other alternative means of transport generate, whether it's gas or other aspects where they're raising uh, taxes for mass trans or you know public trans. Public, All trans that has to public be transportation repositioned. will die. Public transportation. All is that has to be repositioned. So that, but that my point <laughs> is, is the funding there for public transportation is going to have, you've got, you're going to have a budget. I'm a, I'm gonna, so where's that, where's I'm, that budget going to go? I'm going to say something political. Okay. okay? <laughs> this is on the voters primarily. I've interviewed a okay. lot of elected officials and bureaucrats and politicians. It is very hard to get a politician to say that they will cut a job, right? If you will, if you live in a world where all the vehicles are self-driving cars and we don't need driver's licenses anymore, why right. would we still have a DMV? And I exactly. literally had this conversation with politicians yeah. saying, well, why wouldn't we just eliminate the local DMVs then since the state will license all the robo taxis and blah. And they're like, well, no, we can't. They, 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 they're they allergic to saying they're going to cut a government job. Republicans and Democrats both. They're allergic to saying they're going to cut a government job. We're yeah. not going to need traffic cops anymore. If the cars are driving themselves, we're not going to need traffic. That wipes out more than half of all criminal cases. But get a politician to say, you know, we don't need so many police. They'll, they'll like start shaking. Like they had a whole defund the police movement. And what did they do? They increased funding. They, they just literally cannot. And it's on the voters to say, wait a minute, we don't. Voice of America. Do you remember Voice of America? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? It's it, yep. it was created to send radio signals into communist Eastern Europe and Propaganda. Russia to promote the message of democracy and liberty. The Berlin Wall fell like 20, 30 years ago. What do you that was what the, do you think happened to Voice crazy. of America? It just died. No. This is, we're spending $100 million a year on something that died 30 years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Like, That's my point. Is, is they just re remove these budgets, but push them hopefully into no, something No, they didn't remove the actually... budget. They keep spending the money. But it's on us as voters to say, hey, wait a minute. Like, if you're talking about this, like, look, do we want to get to a better world or not? If we want to get to a better world, we need to force our politicians to cut the jobs that are no longer necessary. Yeah. And, and honestly... We could get into a larger macroeconomic conversation, but boy, they're printing a lot of money. I wonder if this might be a problem in the future. I wonder if we yeah, could but, look to the past and see what happens when countries <laughs> print money recklessly. It doesn't usually look good. We could get into that conversation, but that might be going beyond where you want to go. Warren, you know that you you and I both know this isn't going to happen. You know what's not going to happen? This, that they're not going to take those steps. So they're going to continue to put loopholes, hurdles, all these governmental scenarios in front of companies that are innovating like what Tesla is doing. I guess that's the thing, is I want to make sure that when you're looking at Tesla, you, that you have to look at the, the bigger picture. We, you, I, know that Tesla is doing the right thing for our society, whether you're looking at alternative energy, safety, all the elements that, are, that Tesla is bringing to the table. My question is going to be, especially, and this gets back to Elon's uh, mentality, and I, I still think that Elon at some point is going to have to step away from the CEO position, which I know he's planning. But they need, you know, one, they need PR, which they have not been able to get into play. And two, I think they need a team in there to really start moving in this uh, positioning from a lobbying standpoint to be able to, to deal with what's coming, which is coming in the next few years. 
I, I would not underestimate Elon Musk's power of PR. He has 58 million followers on Twitter, and people are scared of him. Jack Dorsey is scared of him. Jeff Bezos is scared of him. If, if they cross Elon, Elon can say, fine, I'll start a company and I'll run you out of business. No, no one else on the planet. Like, who else is Jeff so Bezos scared of? you think the government is, is scared of Elon? I think po individual politicians are terrified of the prospect of Elon Musk coming to their town and saying, I want to save lives. I've shown you I can save lives. In La yeah. I've saved lives in Las Vegas. I've saved lives in Orlando. I want to save lives in New York. And Mayor de Blasio or Mayor whoever and Governor whoever, they, do, they want people to keep dying. If Elon Musk walked into your state and started <laughs> saying, look, here's the numbers. Here's how many lives Tesla robotaxis are saving in this state. Right. This guy is killing 10,000 people a year. Right. When you put it that way, <laughs> if, if, if you're if you're the politician and Elon Musk yeah, that says, kind of listen, puts you in a bad, bad light. I'm just sure. saying if Elon Musk says, look and look, if Warren Redlich says it, you're a politician. You don't care because Warren Redlich has 13000 followers on Twitter and 56000 <laughs> YouTube subscribers. But if Elon Musk says it, he has 58 sure. million Twitter followers and every news media publication is going to cover it. Yeah, and you sure. and, and it, he's only going to do it if he has the facts. So if the facts are there, if it's demonstrated that this is saving lives, that it's making – this is the thing that people don't get. Robotaxi Future is going to make transportation better. It's going to save lives. It's going to save money. It's going to save the environment. It's going to do all these great things, and it's coming really fast. And if you are going to claim that you are an environmentalist, that you care about saving lives, that you care about making transportation less expensive for people, you have to choose. Am I going to keep paying yeah. the conductor on the Long Island Railroad $250,000 a year for taking tickets? Yeah. And keep and, and make people pay ten dollars or fifteen dollars for a ride that should cost five dollars. Right. Or at some point, am I going to buckle and say, OK, this system is dead. Sorry, conductor, you're going to have to take your one hundred and fifty thousand dollar a year pension and, and stop taking your two hundred fifty thousand dollar year paycheck. That's yeah. that's where we are. I'm, I'm not making those numbers up, by the way. That's actually what no, some that's conductors real. on the Long Island Railroad make for taking tickets. This is how messed up the system is. Yeah. And I think you hit it right, because if you look at where Elon is moving and around all this, I'll, I often, you know, it's kind of crazy like a cat type scenario where he's kind of positioned himself from a social media standpoint and an influencer standpoint that I think you're right. He's going to have an effect or at least an ability to somewhat control the narrative when we do see the pushback, which is going to happen. We're going to see the pushback. We already see it in mainstream media. So it's you not can like... We're not we're not there now. You can see it with the carbon tax is a little different. Like Elon went to the Biden administration and said, we need a carbon right. tax and car anything with the word tax in it is toxic politically. And the voters don't want a carbon tax and they don't understand a carbon tax. And it's harder to sell a carbon tax to the voters. It's harder for Elon to say Joe Biden is killing people because he won't do a carbon tax. Right. It, that's right. not yeah. going to work. <laughs> It's when you have really, really compelling evidence and a really, really compelling exactly. story that's hard to rebut. And he doesn't have that with carbon tax. It's From an economic standpoint, everyone knows a carbon tax is a better way of reducing CO2 emissions and shifting us off fossil fuels. But the, but ultimately, what that what you have to say to the average voters, we're going to raise the price of gas a dollar a gallon, and that doesn't sell mm -hmm. to the voters. Yeah. But you know, making robo taxis, you know, letting people choose a dollar a mile robo taxis versus 250 a mile Ubers and Lyfts and five dollars a mile taxis. That's a much easier selling point. Sure. It goes back to my point. And, and this is and I know your position is, hey, it's coming and it might be two years, three years, five years, whatever it is. It's long term. But my point is, is that we need to start paving when I say we meaning Tesla as the Tesla army needs to help start paving the way for both adoption as well as uh, our government officials being able to understand what is happening, what is really happening uh, around transportation, so, which I think is where we are. Have you seen the Boring Company tunnel system in Vegas? I've only seen the videos. I wrote um, it. I wrote it. Yep, I was out. I've only Be seen the videos. Before, Plaid, before the Plaid event, I was in Vegas at the World of Concrete and I rode the system. And I think that uh, the Boring Company tunnel systems are basically going to be uh, a surreptitious way of sneaking that concept in front of people because mm, right now they're human drivers. Sometime in the next year or two, probably soon, the Boring Company tunnel systems will go autonomous and people will experience yeah. riding in a Tesla without a driver. And then they're going to... So, and then they're going to see it on the road. So, and that will make and it's going to be in Las Vegas and it's going to be in Miami and Fort Lauderdale. And I'm betting you it's going to be in Orlando, Florida, and it's going to be in California. And within five years, you're going to see a bunch of these tunnel systems start springing up and people are going to start riding them from airports to their destinations. 
and more and yeah. more people are going to get that experience. This is this the thing. You mentioned PR a couple times. PR doesn't work. It, it can work in some situations for some, some, op, from some ideas, but right now, the largely the mass the mainstream media has decided that tesla is evil and tesla is the bad guy and they just the 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 clicks you get from mentioning elon musk or tesla in a headline and the clicks you get from a negative headline have led to this perverse scenario where you get more clicks if you have a negative headline about tesla or elon musk so you make negative headlines about tesla or elon musk and until enough people experience tesla and, and enough there has to be a pushback from the viewers and the readers at some point would, the readers are going to at some point, the readers are going to say, hey, Jalopnik, this is ridiculous. You've got to stop this. When, when only 5% of your readers get it, you don't lose that much. When 50% of your readers say, readers say, hey, this is stupid. I wrote in a Tesla. It was fantastic. <clears throat> At some point, you start losing readers. You start losing viewers because you're saying something that's false. But so far, we haven't hit that point. And the PR doesn't matter. You can do all the PR in the world. If you, I don't know if you saw my tweet that Elon replied to where I had like a flow chart. No. Nope. Something happens. Media does negative headline about Tesla. Ah, yes. Version mm -hmm. A, Tesla has no PR department, story dies. Version B, Tesla PR department releases a story. Media takes a negative spin on Tesla's PR story, Creates and then the story these, dies. It's like you just the gave them another wheel. hit. Yeah, Until the you, wheel. Uh, you know, if Tesla, and you know, well, if they just spent $2 million a year on PR, okay, then the PR department says, you know, we could do a lot more if we had $5 million a year. In a few years, you're spending $5 billion a year on advertising like Volkswagen. Yeah. You can make yep. that case, but really putting that money into better factories and better products and better services, that is what's going to deliver it because the customers see it. The customer, the Tesla's best advertising is, hey, you got to check out my new Tesla. My neighbor, For Brian, sure. has let me drive his first his Model 3 Performance and his Model Y long range. And it's like, hey, this is great. If you got a guy who's got a Tesla and the neighbors see the Tesla, like my Cybertruck's going to be in the driveway. Everybody's going to see that thing. I'm not putting that thing in the garage. I'm showing that thing off and everybody's going to see it. And somebody's going to say, hey, can we go for a ride? Sure, let's go. Hey, you want to go for a ride? Let's go. Check this out. The Teslas sell themselves. You don't need PR. You don't need advertising. You just need people to sit in the car.